moved in, and of course Sunday that was that way. Let me mention to you, between services Sunday, uh, Jessica, I see you here tonight. Uh, Jessica's mother, I got the text that Jessica's mom passed away. Jesse and I have been with each other today and with her dad and went over to the funeral home and made some arrangements. But Miss Linda, Mid Linda, I call her Mid Linda all the time. I called her Sister Linda every now and then, but most time it's just Mid Linda. Was one of the most gracious, joyful person that I ever met in pain. Now, you know, a lot of folk can be gracious and joyful when they're not hurting. But this lady has fought cancer for 15 years, and uh, you know, and, it's, and she lived up until. Cause some of the ladies said, "Well, she was just doing good." I said, "I know she lived right up till she died." You know, some folk can't do that, but she did. She got the the grace on her to live up till she died, and uh, we'll have her funeral on Sunday, uh, Saturday at three o'clock. Amen. Wasn't it cool how the funeral director kind of changed her mind? We started putting a little pressure on her. Jesse, just a little pressure. Let me just mention this to you, and I know this can be a little rough for some, but hey, look, if you don't know much about funerals or if somebody you know passes and, and you don't know what to do, call me. Hey, man, get a hold of me. I mean, I can, I can get prices reduced real quick. I, I, I know the game, you know, and I'm not trying to shorten. I know the funeral homes have got to do what they got to do. I understand that. So, but I use this phrase, on, well, by law, by law, and I'm thinking, yeah, all right. I did. I said, can we haul her in the truck, man? Uh, and that's when she started scrolling on her phone, going, you know what? We can do this on Saturday. Before, it was like, we can't do this on Saturday. So can we put her in the back of a truck and get her there? Hold on just a minute. Oh, yeah, we can do this on Saturday. And once you realize how serious we are, amen. And we will, I mean, I haul anybody in the back of a truck, you know. I mean, I was hauled in the back when I was young. And I don't see a problem getting hauled out later. Uh, t tonight I want to talk to you about, and just going to teach to you just a little bit, on, on none of our pain will be wasted. And I think this is important for you to grasp, that none of our pain that we go through in life will be wasted. And I just want to back it up with Scripture and lay into it here. You know, the pain of childbirth gives way to the joy of a new life. You know, I've never talked with a woman who said, I didn't feel nothing. Amen. I mean, eventually you will. The disappointment of defeat forces athletes to train with even more resolve. You know, whenever you're in, in athletics and you stumble or fall or don't do as well and the pain hits, it forces you to press in a little bit more. Amen. The humiliation of failure leads to fresh awareness of personal flaws, sober self-evaluation, the emergence of better, more mature, more intentional patterns of life. The most cherished realities in our lives are forged in the fires of pain and suffering. You know, we've learned more in pain and suffering than we ever learned anywhere else. A Sunday morning, I preached a message. What was it called again? Pain happens. Amen. It just happens. It's going to happen, and it, 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 it's going to happen to all of us. So, Pastor, how does, how does earthly pain serve an eternal gain? Matthew chapter 5, verse 11. The Scripture says, Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad because great is your reward in heaven for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. In other words, you are no better than the prophets who were before you. And if they persecuted them, amen, if they said false things against them, if they caused pain to them, then bless you because you have great is your reward. In other words, there's going to be a reward on the other side through all the things we go through. So Jesus strengthened us not only for enduring but rejoicing. And again, when I say rejoicing, let's go back a couple of services. And remember what James says, count it all joy whenever you're going through diverse or, or rough times in life. Again, the, the, I love the fact that from Jesus, from, actually from Genesis on, but when he hit Jesus and through the disciples, they all were echoing basically the same thing. They were saying the same. They were teaching the same. They were trying to help us understand. So how do we do that, Pastor? By looking for the joy that's, of course, that's ahead. Did you know before Miss Linda passed, she told my wife, I'll see you soon. Amen. I, I wrote in a post today, she just got ahead of us. We'll catch up with her later. Come on. Amen. And that, that's the truth. Everything here is temporary. As a matter of fact, it even says what we see is temporary. What we don't see is eternal. So when I look at this scripture and I realize our present sufferings, Romans 8.18 says, the sufferings of this present time that we're in, 2021, are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. 
Amen. Mm -hmm. All the struggle we've gone through here is not even to be compared. The Message Bible says it like this. That's why I don't think there's any comparison between the present hard times and the coming good times. It just lays it out. Doesn't matter how much and how much trouble we've gone through here. The good times are coming. Everybody say good times. Good times are coming. Amen. Literally, our suffering in this age are not worthy of the glory that is coming in the age to come. However, when we read out of Matthew 5 and Romans 8, it doesn't make explicit, amen, the nature of the relationship between our present pain and our coming gain. 2 Corinthians 4, 17 gives us a little idea of this when it says, our, for our light and momentary troubles. When Paul the Apostle calls what we're going through light, after what I preached about him on Sunday, yeah. amen, being shipwrecked three times, beaten, flogged three times, amen, all the stuff and the troubles that he went through, amen, stoned to death, a night in the deep, hunger, pains, the, the trouble with robbers, the trouble with the churches, the anxiety about dealing with churches and all that. And then he looks at us and says, by the way, our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us. And he puts himself in that category. What I've gone through is light. An eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. It holds out a precious particular truth to all of us, and especially in the midst of suffering, that don't seem to produce any good in this life. That light momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. Again, I don't have to know how it's happening. All I can tell you is, is that none of our pain is going to be wasted. Amen. That God has figured out that the things we've gone through in this life, the hurt we've gone through, amen, the struggles we've gone through, that there's going to be a reward for it on the other side. So I would tell you this. When I see a man like Paul the Apostle who throws down a resume of all the things he went through, I can't imagine. And then lost his head for preaching the gospel. Imagine what his reward's like. And then think about your own life and ask yourself, have I served God with such, uh, with such dignity, with such power, with such uh, uh, enthusiasm in such a way that when I've endured pain in this life that I realize it was just light and I have a reward on the other side? It should be a motivation for us. Amen. To press in a little bit more. It far outweighs them all. As a matter of fact, it's beyond all comparison. That's what Paul's saying. It's beyond all comparison to what's coming ahead. It's included in this coming glory. You know, we don't know the half of all that will be included. We really don't. Eyes not seen nor ear heard. But what I do know is right, right here. So I'm going to tell you real fast. We will see the risen, glorified Christ. Come on. Many of you, your whole lives, you just wanted to see Jesus. I, like the Greeks, I want to see Jesus. I just want to see him. Dear friends, 1 John 3, 2, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when, we, when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Amen. So in other words, I'm going to see him first. So one of the things I know is going to be on my reward, I'll see him. Not only that, I'll be like him. So if he walked through walls, I walk through walls. If he went from heaven to earth, I go to heaven to earth. I go from earth to heaven. I'll be like him. I'm going to take the word and take it for its word. Can you get amen? I'm going to be like him. The next thing I see is, is that we're going to have these glorified bodies. Philippians 3.21 says, Who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform our lowly bodies, these earth suits, so that they will be like his glorious body. So that body he's going to have, we're going to get a body like it. Now, we may not have a mustache like Trey when we get there, but who knows what it's going to be like. Amen. It's going to be an amazing thing. And this said we'll be shining like the sun. Shining like the sun. Matthew 13, 43. When the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father, whoever has ears to hear, let him hear. Did you know what scripture says we're going to judge angels? Now, I don't know what does that mean. Does that mean you know, a pie-eating contest? What are we going to judge angels about? But the scripture even lays out facts that we're going to be judging angels. Amen. And so it's going to be an amazing thing. We'll eat and we'll drink. We'll move. Amen. Are, are these bodies going to take off the taste of a new fullness of joy that we've never had in a world specially designed for our joy? So God designed. God designed a place for us. Amen. When I say designed, I'm talking about just like uh, you would go through a home, a lady would, and she'd design a house out to, just for her. Amen. That the counters are just low enough for them if they're short, or tall enough for that they can reach. It's all designed. That God has a place designed. Miss, imagine that, Miss Jeanette. God has a place designed for your height. Amen. He's going to design a place. He's going to set us up in a place. Amen. That, that's the beauty of this. Romans 8 says, no comparison. 
No comparison. That's why I don't think there's any comparison between the present hard times and the coming good times. The created world itself can hardly wait for what's coming next. Everything in creation is being more or less held back. God reigns it in until both creation and all the creatures are ready and can be released at the same moment into his glorious times ahead. Meanwhile, the joyful anticipation deepens. This is that scripture out of one verse, and it says that the earth groans. In other words, he's holding us all back, and at, at, at the right time, this, is, this could be considered the, the catching away of the church, what some call the rapture or whatever, but at, at the right time, he's going to let us all enter at the same time. Have you ever ran into a place and you had to hold, a, hold the kids back and say, no, you can't go in there just yet. You can't go in just yet. You got to hold them all back. And there's that. And what it does, it builds that anticipation, yeah. that excitement. Amen. And, and, and what happens with anticipation and expectancy, it is a breeding ground to miracles. And if we expected more, I believe we'd get more. Amen. So God holding us back. He said, look, it's not going to be no comparison. All the pain you've gone through here, one day I'm going to step out of the way and let you run down through the gates. Amen. Through the gates of pearl. Did we talk about it on Sunday? That pearl is made from the pain that's in the oyster's mouth. And God has a place. Amen. Twelve gates that we will enter that hit one big golden street. A gate of pearl that we're going to forget all the pain. That's what that pearl represents, pain. And we're going to walk through a place that no more night, no more day, no more tears, and all the pain going to be washed away. I, I had all in my, my five, six families, refugees from New Orleans, from the, from the flood out at the ranch. When I preached on this in the second service, it hit me. If God has pearls that are so big it makes a gate, imagine how big that oyster was. Imagine how big the shrimp are. Boy, that education went, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, they, they got all excited about that. But, you, but how does he come up with that unless you've got oysters that big? You ain't got no idea what God has planned for us. That's right. Amen. Well, we're going to hear well done, good and faithful servant. Amen. In here, we only know in part. The scripture says we only know in part. We only pick up glimpses of it. We just, we just, we just got a little glimpse of what heaven's going to be like. 1 Corinthians 13. Verse 12 says, we don't yet see things clearly. We're squinting in a fog. We're squinting in a fog, peering through a mist. But it won't be long before the weather clears and the sun shines bright. We'll see it all then. We'll see it all as clearly as God sees it, knowing him directly just as he knows us. But for right now, until that completeness, we have three things to do to lead us toward the consummation. Trust steadily in God. Hope unswervingly and love extravagantly. And the best of these three is love. You know the scripture. There remains faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. And I love how the message lays it out. That there are three things here that we need to hold on to. Amen. Look at it again. First, amen, trust steadily in God. You hear me say it all the time. Trust God, love people. Trust steadily in God. Oh, God, I'm going to trust you through all the stuff that's going on. And right now, oh, my goodness, has our trust been tested? Amen. We get tested all the time with all the things that are going on. So trust in him. Second, hope unswervingly. You know, Scripture calls hope an anchor. Amen. It anchors us. It holds us. It keeps us through the storms of life. And then, and then the other one, it love extravagantly. You know, when you realize that you only have so much time here on this earth, there's opportunity every day to love extravagantly, to care for one another. You know, I think of loving extravagantly. I kind of think of uh, uh, Jessica, your daddy, and Miss Linda's dogs. I mean, my dog will come in and nudge me. He's a big dog, but he don't lick me in the face. But they got them ugly dogs like you got, H. What are they called? Boston, Boston Terrier. Terrier. He's got that giant head, little butt, <laughs> or no butt at all. And then two, it got two of them. And I just went in to sit down with Rob, and as soon as I did, boom, I mean, right here in my face. <laughs> you know, I'm having to pull away, and they try to lick me and stuff. And I'm thinking, that little dog loves extravagantly. Yeah. Amen. Now, thank God it ain't as big as my dog. It ripped my face off. <laughs> Amen. Just, but just, you know what I'm talking about, them little yap dogs, or lap, lap dogs, yap dogs. Or they, they yap dog, too. Amen. Amen. So hold on to that. But pain, pain now producing glory. Then every moment, then every moment becomes meaningful. If I knew this back years ago, I'd realize that all the things that I'd gone through, that God, that I would get rewarded for it. You know, if you know you're going to get rewarded, if you know you're working through the weekend, you're going to get a paycheck, you don't mind working. 
Amen. Sometimes you got to remind yourself that what you're doing here matters. Amen. It will matter there. And the pain you're going through, you don't know how. We just see in part. We squint our eyes through it, but somehow it's going to matter. Our afflictions are never wasted. Our pain is never in vain. And empty as our sufferings may seem in this world, they're working. Everybody say working. My pain's working for me. Amen. What I've gone through is working for me. It's producing for me. Amen. It's going to produce glory in the life to come and glory so great that not even the Apostle Paul can grab enough human language to do it justice. So I'll finish with the way I started. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17, out of the message, would say at these times. And I, and I use this phrase quite often. These hard times are small potatoes. Small potatoes compared to the coming good times. Amen. What is your, just real quick, and I know that we kind of online it, but what is your thinking of heaven? What do you think about heaven? You can say it. Say it. It's just unimaginable. Unimaginable. You know, first off, we know that we'll see our loved ones. I think that's the biggest thing we know we're going to see. We'll see those that we love. We'll know them as we know. But what does God have prepared for us? Amen. You know, there are certain joys here that are, are, are particular to certain people. I mean, uh, I like, you know, I like mowing grass. And I think to myself, I wonder if God has that in plan. I love riding a Harley. I wonder if it, I like, back when I was healthier, I loved riding a horse. And I realized I'm going to have a, a new body. I might get to ride a horse, you know, again. You see, you go through that. But, but, uh, but a ship captain, he, might want, to, he want, might, might want a boat. And he's thinking about them oysters I've been preaching about. <laughs> you hear what I'm saying? So, so heaven has a little different twist to everybody. And God designed heaven for us. So he said, these hard times are small potatoes compared to the coming good times. The lavish celebration prepared for us. A, a celebration, a party. You know what I think? What's that, H? I think that we, those joys that you just talked about. Yeah. And stuff that we just love. Yeah. I think it is going to be so much more. Magnified. Awesome than that. Yeah, We yeah. can't even imagine. Can't imagine it. Amen. Can't imagine not getting up and feeling pain. You know, that's going to be gone. Matter of fact, I won't be, I won't be getting up. I won't even be going to sleep. <laughs> Amen. And it goes on in the next verse 18. It says, there's far more here than meets the eye. The things we see now are here today and gone tomorrow. But the things we can't see now will last forever. Do you know, honestly, guys, you're seeing me. I'm here today, but I could be gone tomorrow. And so could you. Amen. And this building could be gone tomorrow. Amen. The way the, the world is turning right now, there's certain things in life is here today. It is gone tomorrow. Amen. We, we, won't, we, we don't know about it. But then it all goes on to say, but the things that we don't see, amen, the things we can't see now will last forever. There, there are special glories in the age to come brought about by our particular afflictions. So I'm telling you, your pain is not wasted, which means that every moment of your affliction is meaningful. It has meaning. It's doing something, causing something, bringing about something glorious. You can't see this. The world can't see this. They think, they, they think that you are tempted to think this suffering is meaningless. Amen. You know, Job got in the place. He, he said meaningless, meaningless. Ecclesiastes, Solomon mentions the meaningless, meaningless. Amen. It just feels like, uh, I think it's Ecclesiastes, I don't know if it's chapter 11, Verses 1 through 11 or chapter 1, verses through 11. I forget where it's at, but it's, it's just like a meaningless life. There are times you honestly look at it and go, you know, what is the use? What is the use? And you've got to shake yourself. We sang the song a while ago, and I, that wasn't something that, that I asked the, the band to do, but, but the song had to do with blessed be your name. Amen. No matter what I go through in life. Amen. Blessed be your name. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be your name. It was Job who said, shall we not receive uh, the, the hard times that come, we, already, we love the good times, but why we get upset when the hard times come? Amen. So, so when I look at this, I realize it's not doing good. People think it's not doing any good. I can't see any good coming out of this. Well, that, that's what you feel if you focus on what you see. So I know it's hard to focus what you can't see, but by faith you've got to believe that what you're going through, right. you're going to get something on the other side. To which Paul responds, look to the things that are unseen, the promise of God. Nothing in your pain is meaningless. It is all preparing, working something, producing something, a weight of glory, a special glory for you, just for you because of that pain. How do I describe glory to you? 
How do I explain that? Uh, when Moses came down out of, the, uh, out of the mount, the Bible says his face shone. It, it had the glory of God on it. He'd been in the presence of God, and his face had a glow to it. So much so he had to cover it to keep from tripping people out. Glory is, is when your kid hits a home run, and you're just, you know what I'm saying? Amen. You got that grin on your face. And the, or they bring home an A, finally. And you got that smile, and you go, I knew they could do it. I, knew, I just knew they could do it, you know. You know or, or she cooks that perfect meal and didn't burn it. But that glory, hallelujah, you know. It's that, it's that, you know, for me, when somebody gets, gets born again, it just gives me that, yeah, thank you, Jesus. Amen, at that, that kind of moment. So I'll close with these thoughts. We do not lose heart. Though our outer self is wasting away. How many times you heard your preachers say that? Amen. We, we, these earth suits are, they're wearing out. They waste away. Amen. Every day they tick by. Our inner self is being renewed day by day. 2 Corinthians 4, 16. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we're wasting away, yet inwardly we're being renewed day by day. So every day your spirit man is being renewed. He's growing. He's getting better. I said this about your mom, Jessica. Uh, somebody asked me when I left the hospital, how was, how was Sister Linda? I said, Sister Linda was good. And I smiled. I said, Sister Linda was good. Her body wasn't. But she was good. And if you can learn how to separate body, soul, spirit, uh, to understand that these bodies are, you know, uh, yeah, I, I was did a funeral on Saturday, and I, I literally, and I probably shouldn't have had, but I like this old guy. His name is Gary, and, and I, I, I looked at his body laying there in the, in the wooden coffin. It was a pine coffin, and I just kind of knocked on him. Just, boom, boom, boom. It was a lot more like, it was like, he wasn't there. He was hard as a rock. I mean, just kind of punched on him. And I thought, well, I'd kiss him, but he's cold. <laughs> I let everybody else do that. I didn't, I didn't like him that much. He meant to, but, but it was a, you see, I can feel, because there's no, he wasn't there. Right. Amen, he wasn't there. And in my mind, I'd already separated the fact. And then I hear people say this, and let me just lay this out here. Well, Pastor, you know, when they, when they bury me, they, I want them to put me in a, in a metal box inside of the coffin. And that way, just in case, you know. I said, just in case, what? Just in case what? What? Just in case what? You're not going to feel nothing. <laughs> you ain't there. Amen. And, and, and I know, hear me again about the funerals. It, it becomes a gimmick. You know, I'll put you inside this box here, and this here box is 5000 this here box is 7000 That's 11000 for you to lay there and take forever for you to decay. Because your body is going back to the earth from which it came. That's right. Amen. And if you, if you cremate it, every molecule God will find when he comes back with Jesus. If you're buried in the, in the water and the sharks ate you, God will make them burp you up. Amen. And put you all back together again. I mean, look, listen to me. You don't think God is able to do these things for us? Absolutely able to do it for us. So I think sometimes we, you know, and, and I love you guys, but I hear this, well, they got their wings. You don't get wings when you die. Right. You don't need wings. Jesus didn't come back with wings. I mean, oh, I know, Pastor, you are really ruining my, my mood right now. But, but you don't get wings when you die. Amen. You don't become an angel when you die. You're greater than the angels. God set you up great. He redeemed you. Angels don't get redeemed. Angels screw up. They get kicked out of heaven. You screw up. You repent. You still get to get to heaven. Come on. How much better deal did we get? Hello? Amen. I don't want wings. Amen. You drink your Red Bull now. <laughs> All right, I got to hush here. Okay. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We see, and again, therefore, we do not lose heart. We don't get discouraged. We don't lose heart. Though outwardly we're wasted away, yet inwardly we're being renewed day by day, which, which, means, uh, which simply means that we pretend that afflictions are not afflictions. They are. Trouble is trouble. Pain is pain. Amen. Now, hurt is hurt. Bringing eternity into view doesn't make our sufferings themselves any less painful, but it steadies our souls to rightly appropriate the pain, to not lose heart. Amen. To lose heart simply means to lose courage, to go on. You've got to keep your courage alive. In light of eternity and the stunning, indescribable magnitude of the glory to come, we can't lose our our courage. We can't lose our heart. Amen. So in view of God, the, the eternity's duration, if I told you, th th that's almost a word you can't even use. Eternity's duration. 
How do you how do you have eternity doesn't have a duration. Amen. It doesn't have an expiration. Amen. All it has is anticipation. Amen. For us to move toward that. So in view of the coming joy, our pains will one day prove to have been almost insignificant. That's what he says. It's just, just for this, these light afflictions. Amen. Except in that they work for us. The eternal glory that we when we uh, that we then will enjoy increasingly so forever. I have a book. Uh, I think I still have it. The Fox's Book of Martyrs. And it's a book about all the martyrs that took place before Christ, during the time of Christ, and then uh, several hundred years after him. And I think of all the men. You know, the Bible, this Bible was translated first. Wycliffe uh, was the first one to do the Bible, the Wycliffe translators. And they're still around. It's known as Wycliffe. But he was burned on a pile of wood and called a heretic for putting your Bible together. Isn't that amazing? And we don't even think like that. But these, these men, the, uh, the, the, I think it's the Gutenberg Press, amen, was the first press to print the Gutenberg Bible. I believe he's also martyred. And I just kind of went down the line and realized how many men and women gave their lives for Christ and their pain. And I'm going to tell you, but these light afflictions are but for a moment. Amen. We're going to get a, a greater reward. So none of our pain is wasted. Can I get an Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your people tonight. I thank you for those watching online. Remind us again, none of our pain is wasted. Lord, you have a plan for everything that we've gone through. Lord, I believe in the name of Jesus. We may not be able to see it now, but we're looking at things that are seen. And by faith, help us to see beyond that. I thank you for your mercies and your goodness in our life. Give us grace in the time of need. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Guys, I want to give you a quick opportunity. Uh, let's do this. Uh, if you need an offer an envelope, it's there in front of you. Amen. If you want to give on your phone, you can. But, but Travis, would you mind just taking the bucket and standing at the door?